All right, I'm going to make another video about uh, some work I'm doing on the Tomos. I've got my dog Cody here, or my daughter's dog Cody. He's now standing next to the motor that I'm going to put in. Um, so my main task for today is I'm going to get rid of this motor that's right here. This one I'm thinking has a defective hull sensor. Um, I've opened up the back before and tested each of the hull sensor wires. And it looked like, um, I'll show you on this one, it looked like... There's like a blue one. I think the blue hall sensor wire was bad. Uh, not the wire itself, the sensor. And um, this is after I had taken apart uh, this Molex and and uh, split off all of the different uh, sensors into their own um, bullets. But uh, yeah, so when I tested each of these wires, um, I noticed that I was getting like a 0.4 volt. And, and then as I turned the motor, I would get zero and then 0.4 volt again on all of the wires except for the blue one. The blue one just remained zero the entire time. So um, I'm not sure if that meant that it was a bad sensor or if uh, it was the uh, wiring somewhere. But anyway, that motor, it runs, but it runs super rough. So from, you know, stop to about 15 miles an hour, it's making this like ridiculous sound. I'm not, maybe. I should lift the bike up. You know, I'm gonna lift the bike up and um, we'll, we're gonna see if you can hear it. Um, don't eat that. Hey, come here, don't eat the wall. What are you eating? Come here. Um, he's looking like he's not doing anything. Cody, <whistles> Cody, that's bird poop. Guess a bird got in here. Anyway, um, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna try to lift this bike up so that we can see if it'll make that sound when it's not under load, um, just so I can tell you, uh, show you what was happening. All right, my dog's probably not going to like this very much, but I'm going to test this uh, motor just to see if I can make, get it to make the sound uh, when its rear wheel is hanging off the ground as opposed to when it's under load. My guess is it's not going to make the sound with no load, um, but it definitely does it when I'm riding. So let's just see. Excuse the barking or the crazy dog. Doesn't bother you? Okay. Yeah, it doesn't make the sound when it's not under load. I see the chain needs to be adjusted. All right. So um, I am convinced, though, that that motor needs to be replaced because as soon as I get on it, um, it makes an awful kind of like rumbling, terrible groaning sound. Uh, and what's interesting is is that so this has three three different speeds, right? So um, on the slowest speed, it makes it the most. It has a terrible sound. Second one, less, and, and then the fastest, even, you know, has less. So I'm not exactly sure what this does, what the effect of this sending different signals to the controller, sending different signals to the hall sensors, uh, or getting different signals from the hall sensors. I'm not exactly sure how all that interacts to make this problem, but um, hopefully it is the hall sensor. And, um, we'll see i'm going to go ahead and replace it so you can see right now uh, underneath this cover is the existing motor that's got like kind of almost like a band holding it um, i'm going to need to get in there and undo uh, that bolt you can kind of see right there sneaking peeking out right up there i have to undo that and then i'm gonna probably well i'm gonna definitely need to Loosen the rear wheel, move it in so that we have some slack. And I'm going to bang on that thing to knock it out. Um, and then uh, I got to do the whole process in reverse. The main problem with this is like aligning that rear wheel with these, this kind of snail chain adjuster is a pain in the butt. Fortunately, um, tensioning it is a lot easier with this tensioner. Um, and we'll just uh, see how it goes. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take this molex connector which i feel like is pretty unreliable uh, and just snip it off um, i'm going to create uh, a new connection with uh, some of these bullet connectors um, i already have the female portion of this on the bike already so all i have to do is solder i, I like to take the plastic off and solder them and then shrink wrap them to all of these little wires um, in general, these wires are kind of fragile, and um, I wish they had used a thicker gauge, but uh, this stuff works pretty well. It's worked so well so far. Um, the only issue with these bullet connectors is 
they're they're really tight fitting so you have to jam them into each other and then they're pretty hard to get off so it kind of almost defeats the purpose of having them being so you know removable or at least suggesting that they're really removable so anyway um, i'm gonna go ahead and snip this I don't, i'm gonna have to pause because i using my phone for these videos um, and i'll get back to you all right so i managed to cut off um this thing molex connector and uh stripped all these wires so that i can now um use this to connect to this um one of the things i like to do first is get a uh um where are they shrink tubing heat tubing i guess this one's kind of small um so it won't actually go over so i, I need to get a bigger one um, I think I may have one sitting here. No, nope, this is the same size. Um, let's see. I need to get uh, a larger size shrink tubing in order to uh, to cover this portion because uh, I'm basically going to tear off this insulation that they include on here and use shrink tubing instead. All right, so I stripped the... Uh, plastic insulation off of the bullet connector. Um, I just kind of smushed the metal here just to hold it in place while I solder. And I'm just going to solder this connection. And I put this uh, shrink tubing on the other side and I'm just going to pull it over and use the heat gun to heat it up after I've done all that. Alright, so I'm going to take this panel off <clears throat> to get to the motor. And uh, so I have to take off the kickstand bolt right here in order to get to the bolt that holds this motor on. All right, so I'm gonna undo this, this bolt right here, I think. What is it? I don't know. It's in there. Okay. Um, Alright, so let me pull this out. Is this the one I just undid? Or did I undo the other one? I undid the other one. I undid the wrong one. Alright, I think I'm going to take this whole bracket off just to... I need to paint it anyway. It's uh, got a lot of raw metal on it but uh let's see it come off you can see all the, the little cuts in it that have been done um i had this in about three different positions on this bike that's why it has all these holes but really i only use those two main holes there and i've got to spray paint this so here's the motor now um i gotta use this tool that i bought um that's got a swivel on it and this long extension to get into this really uncomfortable spot. I'll show you. Right in there, see that bolt? I gotta get to that bolt to loosen this, uh, this up. So I'm loosening this up, and there's these little set screws that uh, the guy put in for me on this sprocket. So this thing should probably pop off pretty easily right now, unless I have to loosen them a little bit more. Yep, there it goes. We're in business. Alright, so 
you can see that so this was the sprocket uh, originally it was 10 millimeters uh, the bore it's a number 40 sprocket um, the guy at the machine shop made it 12.5 originally it's actually supposed to be 12 <clears throat> but yeah he machined me another one that's on the other motor uh, for free which was awesome and um, you can see the set screws in there that he also put in there there's a little um, like a collar like a little piece of metal in there that I put in I'm not sure I'm gonna put that on the new one but uh, let's just see how tight uh, the new one fits and I mean it not need this little collar right there and in uh, that screw this was the original screw that went on uh, to hold This, uh, actually I didn't, yeah, it's all this sprocket. This is actually the second sprocket I tried. You can see how it's all chewed up. Um, this wasn't round originally, so you can see that uh, because it didn't fit perfectly, it just kind of ground this round hole out of the sprocket. Originally it was sort of like what they call a double D bore. It kind of had like a C shape on this side and a C shape on that side, but uh, now it's just totally trashed. So um, I think I'm going to just start banging on this thing and knock it out of the bike. All right, so now I'm going to bang on this thing, use my boomstick, and knock this thing out of the bracket. I got the motor out and I have to figure out I got to remember the order of these things basically I, I think the only wires we switched were the blue and the yellow that we switched those because um, when the motors when when the uh, the drive is on the left side of the bike which it is currently when it's on this side the motor actually spins the wrong direction um, and it's it's acting like it's spinning in reverse but uh, if you do that it won't uh, you won't get the three speeds that the thing has so um, you have to uh, sorry my hands in the way here um, you have to spin the uh, the motor the opposite direction in order to do that you switch these phase wires you can see the colors are switched here and you also have to switch the um, the hall sensor wires. Um, I'm gonna unplug this real quick because I don't want to get shocked. And uh, I am going to maybe take a picture of this just so I don't forget. And I'm gonna detach all this stuff. And then I'm going to take this motor and plug all these wires in. So <clears throat> I noticed something interesting. Um, I ch I found this connection where I connected yellow to green and I guess green to yellow right it's yellow um, but it's not the same on the phase wires I have yellow to blue and blue to yellow so I'm not sure exactly it's gonna run better if I copy this to that or that to this I'm going to go ahead and test it So I swapped these wires, and now it's green, yellow, yellow, green, and, and the blue is blue. Um, that now matches what's here, green and yellow, uh, yellow and green, these two. And uh, the blue is the blue. Um, let's see how this runs. I'm being curious. Just going to spin this motor now that I've taken it out. It's going to either sound terrible or beautiful. I have the keys. Gotta grab my keys. All right, let's see. No, that definitely doesn't work. Oh, wait a minute. It works, sort of. Let's keep 
it this year. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Sounds a little weird. Coming forward. Okay, forward doesn't work, just reverse. Alright, so obviously that's no good. Um, so the way I had it before worked better. Um, I'm going to test this new motor because I think this thing is toast. Alright, so I got the new motor hooked up. It's attached. It's sort of like the default position, right? So all the colors are all matched to the, the same colors. Um, if this motor is good, it should just spin normally, but it's going to spin in reverse. Um, so uh, we may have to switch like a couple of these wires to make it spin properly, but it should work. Um, so let's see, this key is on. All right, I guess I'll have to do that reverse of front. I don't know, let's see. See if this spins. No. Nothing? Oh, would it help if I turn on the power? Okay, we're good. Let's see if this works. That's pretty slow. It totally works. Okay, so this is the slow. So this is whatever that means. That's definitely the slowest speed, right? So that's how fast that goes. Seems pretty slow. So there's middle speed. That usually got me up to like almost almost 40, and then this speed. some weird noises a little clicking I don't know if it's learning or not there's a self learn so I'm not exactly sure what this is so it's either um, gives you like a progressive throttle so when you do full throttle it winds up a little slowly and then it goes or it's some kind of self learn thing where you plug it in if you want the thing to learn a new motor and then unplug it after it's learned it. I don't really know, but I think I think the way it's been working lately is if I keep it plugged in, I get instant throttle. That just sounds weird. You see how it goes dun dun dun? Shouldn't do that. Do a different speed. Do a second speed. Okay, so that's just the high speed that does that. it's okay we're gonna we're gonna put this all back together see how this new motor runs I think I'm gonna call it a day um, putting in that motor and aligning the chain is kind of a big job I'll do that all in the next video and um, I'm still trying to scare up a GoPro if anybody's got a good suggestion for like a good, good uh, beginner GoPro for a helmet um, let me know um, and I'll see you next time